Merci beaucoup tout le monde d'être venu aujourd'hui. Ça me fait plaisir d'être ici au Manitoba euh, comme fier gars de l'Ouest canadien. Euh, je suis fier d'être ici euh, aux Prairies. Uh, as a proud Westerner, born and bred, it's great to be back on the Prairies. It's even better to be with my two caucus colleagues here, Larry McGuire. He's the chair of the Manitoba Conservative Caucus. Uh, and as you can see, he's recovering from a, a, a night of wild parties last night. He, was, uh, he just had his birthday. So he's uh, 45 years old, and uh, we won't sing him happy birthday, but he seems to be recovering well. And we have Marty Morantz, uh, our Associate Shadow Minister of Finance, the first member of Parliament to predict the inflation crisis that Trudeau's deficit spending would cause. Uh, it's on the record. You can look it up. He was the one that called it. He was absolutely right. Monsieur et Madame, tout le monde, ça me fait plaisir d'être ici. Tout d'abord, je vais m'adresser en français. Je vais adresser les Manitobains en français. En reconnaissance euh, du, de la fière la population franco-manitobain, euh, mon père a des racines euh, et des origines canadiens françaises de la Saskatchewan. Euh, donc, euh, il y a des fiers francophones à travers l'Ouest. Euh, et euh, donc, euh, mais malheureusement, pour eux et pour tout le monde, euh, la vie est devenue beaucoup plus difficile. Justin Trudeau est déconnecté de la réalité. Les, le coût de la vie augmente. Le travail n'est plus payant. Le coût de logement, de loyer, des hypothèques et des paiements principaux ont tous doublé sous Justin Trudeau. La criminalité, le chaos, les drogues et le désordre deviennent de plus en plus communes sur nos rues et Justin Trudeau essaie de diviser pour contrôler la population. Assez, c'est assez. C'est le temps de renverser cette tendance et c'est le temps de transformer la peine et la douleur que Justin Trudeau a causé en espoir pour tout le monde. Et on va le faire avec le gros bon sens. Le gros bon sens. On va ramener le gros bon sens chez nous. On va ramener des, des prix plus bas en éliminant le taxe carbone qui augmente le coût de nourriture, de l'essence et de chauffage. On va plafonner les dépenses pour équilibrer le budget ça va nous permettre de réduire l'inflation et les taux d'intérêt. On va rendre le travail payant en réduisant les impôts, réformant des programmes et des déductions, et on va enlever les barrières bureaucratiques pour bâtir des grands projets et pour permettre nos immigrants de travailler dans leur profession. Alors, des chèques de paie plus puissants. On va ramener des chèques de paie plus puissants pour les Canadiens. Et on va rendre le logement plus abordable en enlevant les barrières bureaucratiques et en permettant davantage de construction. Je vais lier le montant d'argent que le gouvernement fédéral verse aux municipalités au, au nombre de maisons qu'elles permettent d'être bâties. Il nous faut davantage de maisons. Nous avons le moins de maisons par capita pour, chaque, pour tous les pays au G7. À cause de ces barrières bureaucratiques, moi, je vais les enlever en donnant plus d'argent aux municipalités qui permettent davantage de construction et en retirant des fonds des municipalités qui empêchent la construction pour nos jeunes. Plus de maisons va permettre à nos jeunes encore d'avoir euh, une maison et de commencer une famille. Et finalement, nous, avons, nous allons rétablir la liberté en éliminant la censure et le contrôle qu'impose Justin Trudeau. C'est en utilisant le gros bon sens de monsieur et madame tout le monde qu'on va le faire ici au Canada. Donc, ramenant des prix, prix plus bas chez nous, ramenant des chèques de paie plus forts chez nous, ramenant des logements plus abordables chez nous, ramenant la sécurité chez nous, ramenant la liberté chez nous, ramenant le gros bon sens chez nous. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here today. After, every, after eight years of Justin Trudeau, the government is broke and everything feels broken. Trudeau is out of touch, Canadians are out of money, and the crime is out of control. Recently, he introduced a new inflationary budget with $60 billion more gas poured on the inflationary fire. His own minister admitted that deficit spending causes inflation. And then two weeks later, what did she do? Added $60 billion or $4,200 per family 
in additional inflationary spending. And since that budget, inflation is back on the rise after he and his government promised that inflation was only going to drop. And now he wants a 61 cent a liter carbon tax. He's imposed a tax of 14 cents on gas, which drives up the cost of heating and groceries as well. Now he wants to raise it from 14 cents to 61 cents a liter. What is that going to do to our grocery bills when you hit farmers with a 61 cent a liter tax on the diesel they use to produce our food or the truckers that ship our food? Everything is going to become more expensive. No wonder one in five Canadians are skipping meals and 1.5 million going to food banks because they can't afford the price of food. Some of them are asking for help with medical assistance and dying, not because they're sick, but because they're hungry after eight years of Justin Trudeau. Meanwhile, housing costs have doubled. The cost of monthly rent has doubled. The cost of a monthly mortgage has doubled. And the cost of a needed down payment for an average house has doubled. Double trouble after eight years of Justin Trudeau. Crime, chaos, drugs and disorder have become more common in our streets after Trudeau brought in catch and release, allowing the same tiny minority of, of violent reoffenders to go free again and again and again. And instead of helping people get off drugs, Trudeau gives out heroin-grade opioids for free, which addicts then can sell to children in order to buy even stronger drugs. And that is why, under Justin Trudeau, the number of people who die every year of overdoses has tripled. We need to follow the facts, and the facts show that this approach has failed. To distract, he divides. He attacks our people, calls them names, and tries to censor what people see and say. Enough. It's time to turn the hurt that he has caused into the hope that Canadians need. And Conservatives will do that by making Canada work for the people who do the work. We're going to bring home lower prices by getting rid of the inflationary carbon tax and balancing the budget to bring down inflation and interest rates. We're going to bring home powerful paychecks by lowering income taxes to reward work, by removing gatekeepers so that we can build more hydroelectric dams, more pipelines, more natural resource projects to bring home those jobs here to this country. We're going to remove gatekeepers with a blue seal test that will allow our brilliant immigrants to prove that they are qualified to work in professions for which they are trained so that we can get the 20,000 immigrant doctors and 32,000 immigrant nurses serving patients in our hospitals here in Canada. We're going to bring homes people can afford by removing the government gatekeepers. Uh, municipal bureaucracies block home construction, which means we have the fewest houses per capita on planet Earth. Uh, sorry, in uh, fewest houses per capita in the G7, even though we have the most land to build on. Why is it the Americans, with 10 times more people to house on a smaller land mass, have house prices that are barely half of what ours are, even when you adjust for the exchange rate? Why is it that we have, that Vancouver is the third most and Toronto the tenth most expensive housing market in the world, worse than Manhattan, worse than Singapore, worse than London? Why? Because government gatekeepers drive up the cost by making us the second slowest place to get a building permit. We need to speed up building permits by linking the, federal, the amount of federal money that cities get to the number of houses they permit to be built. I will require large cities to permit 15% more housing construction per year in order to get federal infrastructure money. If they exceed that goal, I'll give them a building bonus. I'll require every federally funded transit station to have high density housing around and even on top and I'll sell off 15% of the 37,000 federal buildings to convert it into housing so we can bring homes our young people can afford. We'll end the crime and chaos by ending catch and release require the small number of repeat violent offenders stay behind bars till their, their sentence is complete rather than being released the same day they are arrested. And we'll take the money away from the, the plan to give that Trudeau has of giving out tax-funded narcotics. We'll put that money instead into treatment, de detox, and rehabilitation so we can bring home our loved ones drug-free. Finally, we'll bring home our freedoms again by getting rid of censorship so that people can express themselves free from woke political correctness or, or government control. Really, it's common sense. The common sense of the common people, united for our common home. Your home, my home, our home, let's bring it home. Thank you.
people now have time for five questions from the floor. Good morning. Um, comment réagissez-vous à la menace uh, ce matin de, de Meta de bloquer certains utilisateurs Facebook en réplique au projet de loi C-18, en fait, est-ce que c'est une façon appropriée de Meta de, de réagir? Non. Um, je, je suis contre les menaces, je suis contre la censure, et je trouve que l'incompétence totale de Justin Trudeau est responsable pour ça. Uh, Justin Trudeau a introduit uh, des projets de loi, y compris C-11, qui essaie de contrôler le contenu de l'Internet. Uh, et, et maintenant, on voit que uh, les entreprises numériques uh, font exactement la même chose que Justin Trudeau, c'est-à-dire de contrôler ce que les gens voient uh, sur l'Internet. Moi, je crois dans la liberté d'expression, de permettre uh, tout le monde de s'exprimer uh, ouvertement, sans censure du gouvernement et sans censure des entreprises numériques. Et c'est pour ça que nous sommes le seul parti, le Parti conservateur est le seul parti qui va protéger la liberté d'expression pour tous les Canadiens, et, et, y compris les médias. So, um, do, you, do you want me to give that in English as well? Um, you know, Justin Trudeau's total incompetence and his attempt to censor the Internet uh, are now hurting our media outlets. Uh, now he's created a situation where, where big tech might end up censoring the same way that he does. Uh, I don't believe that uh, either big tech or big government should censor what people see and say online. Conservatives are the only party that will protect Canadians against government and big tech censorship and allow everyone to express themselves freely. Yep. Now you'll be door knocking in Winnipeg South Centre this afternoon. Uh, conservative parties have only held that riding once since it was created in 1988. How important in this by-election is it for Uh, conservatives to take that seat away from what liberals and what has traditionally been a liberal seat? Well, even in liberal strongholds like this one, people are frustrated with and disappointed with Justin Trudeau. Life costs more, work doesn't pay, housing costs have doubled, crime, chaos, drugs and disorder are common in our streets. We need to reverse the hurt that Trudeau has caused with the hope that Canadians need. So my message to voters in this liberal stronghold is this. Let's get back to common sense. Let's bring home lower prices by getting rid of the inflationary carbon tax and balancing the budget to bring down inflation and interest rates. Let's bring home powerful paychecks with lower income taxes that reward hard work. Let's bring homes people can afford by removing gatekeepers to build more for our youth and our immigrants. Let's bring home safety with jail and not bail for repeat violent offenders and by giving treatment rather than narcotics to addicts to bring them home drug-free. Uh, this is common sense. It's the, the common sense of the common people, united for our common home. Thank you. Good morning. Um, what is your perspective on Uganda passing a law to jail LGBTQ people, and do you have any plans to march in a pride parade this year? Well, the, the uh, Ugandan law is outrageous uh, and appalling. And uh, we should continue to give refuge in Canada to uh, gays, lesbians, LGBT people who are persecuted uh, abroad. I was proud to be part of a government that opened the door to uh, people who are persecuted in that way and for those reasons to come to Canada and live in freedom. Uh, my purpose is to make Canada the freest country in the world, the freedom for everybody, including gays and lesbians, the freedom to marry start a family, raise kids, freedom from bigotry and bashing, freedom to be judged by personal character, not by group identity, freedom to uh, start a life uh, and be judged on your merit, freedom uh, to uh, get a good job, earn a good living and live a great life. Uh, and that's why I wish everyone a uh, happy Pride Month because our freedom is something in which all of us can take pride. Hi, uh, I'm just wondering uh, if I like how you feel about Mr. Bernier and if he's a threat to your party in that seat in Portage Lisgar. Uh, Maxime Bernier is just like Justin Trudeau. Both of them have expressed support for Quebec separatism. Um, both of them would have a hard time, would, would need a map to find Portage or 
Winkler. Um, both of them said they admire China's dictatorship. Both of them want free trade with China. Both of them support legalizing hard drugs. Um, both of them supported woke policies in the House of Commons, um, even though they put on a big act outside of the House of Commons. Um, only the Conservative Party will bring home lower prices by axing the carbon tax. Only Conservatives will bring home powerful paychecks with lower taxes that reward hard work. Only Conservatives will protect farmers, hunters, and licensed sports shooters against the attacks of Justin Trudeau. Uh, we are the, the only common sense party that has a chance to win. And there's one more thing that uh, Trudeau and Bernie have in common. If you vote for either of them, you'll end up with a liberal government. Now this will be uh, the final question. Uh, David Johnson is testifying committee next week. You want him replaced. Can you name names of who you'd like to see in there instead? I, I, no, I can't name a specific name because I would do that in partnership with the other parties. All the parties in the House of Commons should come together and agree on someone who is nonpartisan, not connected to any party leader, and who has a track record of uh, objectivity, preferably as a judge. Uh, so that, that is what I uh, pr propose. I don't think we should have a, someone who's a family friend, a ski buddy, a chalet neighbor, a member of the Trudeau Foundation, uh, who, which received money from Beijing. I think we should have uh, someone who's truly detached and has a, a lifetime of objective service to the country. That's what we need uh, to, to bring in a full public inquiry, to find out why Beijing interfered in two elections to help Justin Trudeau win, why they donated money to the Trudeau Foundation, why they threatened opposition members of parliament. We need, to, we need answers to all of these questions so that we can bring home control of our democracy back to our people. All right. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. À la prochaine.